It's time for our monthly chat with our friends from ICTC, the Indiana County Technology Center. Kelly Fox joins us with guests. And our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Kelly, good morning. Good morning, Todd. How's everyone down at Renda? Plugging along. We're plugging today, but we're making it. Okay, very good. (laughs) Well, hey, just so you know, I know that we always start out by presenting a nice culinary treat to you. Uh Uh-huh. Just know that uh, I'll be making a special delivery later today. (laughs) You you want to make sure that you stick around a little bit today, Todd, after your shows. (laughs) Oh, I will. Uh, Our culinary people are putting the final touches on a very delicious dessert for all of you for the holidays. Wow. Looking forward to that visit. Meanwhile, we want to talk on a whole different topic this morning, though, and that's health occupations, huh? That is correct. I do have uh, Ms. Zach here with us, our instructor in health occupations, and we have a first-year student. We have Sonia Schamberger with us. She uh, attends Homer Center High School but has been here in our health occupations program this year and has been enjoying it. And it is that time of the year, right, Todd, when Mm -hmm. a lot of people are reaching out into the community and trying to help others who may be more in need. And that's really what we've been focused on here with our students this year at the ICTC. December is a great month for us to look out into the community and say, how can we serve families in our community? And our health program has really done a great job of that. Uh, We've had our NTHS students doing a little fundraiser so that when we visit you next month, uh, we'll have a teddy bear fund drive donation. But our health students have really been looking at ways uh, to incorporate some of their health skills and community relations skills, uh, and they've incorporated that into their curriculum with several different community-based projects. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to talk to Mrs. Zach first. Sure. Yeah, she's right here. All right, very good. Good morning. morning to you. How are you? Good. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so Kelly told us uh, about uh, the outreach efforts uh, from the Health Occupations Program. How do you do that? Well, um, we decided, the students actually decided that they wanted to get involved in some community service. So uh, they came up with the idea of maybe reaching out to the Chevy Chase Center. So we mm-hmm. reached out to them and Uh, In the next few months, we're going to be going down there to do some blood pressure screenings for their clients. Uh, But this month, they decided to put together some shoe boxes with uh, gifts in them for the the clients down there. So the students brought in all of the supplies for that, and they stuffed the shoe boxes and wrapped them, and we were able to deliver 30 shoe boxes down there uh, on Monday, and they're going to distribute those to their clients this week before Christmas. Wonderful. Wonderful. And and that's just one of the outreach efforts that you've made, all right? Correct. We also just finished up a food drive this week. We were able to collect over 200 items canned and boxed for uh, the local food bank. So uh, those items are also supposed to be distributed this week to families in need. That's terrific. Absolutely terrific. Um, I want to talk about a couple of other things with you. Uh, and, and the Health Occupations Program. It's Health Occupation Technology, I guess, is, is the acronym that you use, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it's the HOT program. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Um, so one of the questions has to be when we're dealing with health occupation fields uh, is, um, are kids interested in entering health occupations? And then how has, during this pandemic, how has that affected the way that you're able to teach, to teach them? We do have a large number of students interested in the health occupations program, um, which is nice. It's, it's nice to see that many students interested in getting into health care because the need is definitely there. Um, but COVID has really affected the way we teach clinically. Um, so our students normally go out to clinical at Crystal Waters Personal Care, but last year we were unable to do that because of the pandemic, and unfortunately, again, this year we're going to be affected by that as well. So we decided uh, to incorporate some simulation to teach the students kind of in a safe environment, but still give them that clinical experience that they'll need whenever they go out into the workforce. So. Mm-hmm. We actually paired up with the uh, practical nursing program here, and we just did a simulation here this month teaching the students some delegation, how to take orders, um, and just teamwork concepts that they may not see unless they were out on clinical. So we're hoping that this 
using simulation will help our students get the experiences that they need so that they're ready whenever they go out into the workforce. And so the people can realize the diversity of the programs there at ICTC, the, the health occupations technology field and the practical nursing fields. Those are two different disciplines and two different academic uh, tracks, aren't they? Yes. So the health occupations is for our high school students coming in who think that they may want a career in healthcare. It doesn't necessarily have to be nursing. Um, and then the practical nursing is an adult education program that uh, is a year long here at the ICTC. And then uh, when they graduate from that, they have a uh, licensed practical nurse degree. So, Yeah, those, and, and that's such a perfect fit, isn't it? It is. It is. There's a nice transition there for our students if they decide they want to go over to that program after they graduate. Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk as well uh, with, with Sonia here in just a second, but uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, the cadaver presentation. That's done through a uh, program with St. Louis University, correct? Correct. We, we received a grant through CORE, the Center for Organ Recovery, and it allowed us last year we weren't able to to go on the field trip, but the year before we received the grant, we were able to go to Allegheny General Hospital and view a open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, because of COVID, once again, uh, we were having to come up with a, a different way to utilize that grant, so our students were able to observe a cadaver presentation through St. Louis University uh, just last week, and it kind of incorporated everything that we've been learning in terms of anatomy, so it was nice for the students to be able to see actually what we've been learning from a book uh, in real life. So it was it was a really wonderful presentation through St. Louis. Yeah, well, that's terrific, and and it's great to, uh, to actually see a body uh, that is uh, processed and and is actually you're actually working on a real human body. Let's talk this morning with Sonia Schamberger as well. Sonia, are you ready to talk with me this morning? Yeah. There you are. There you are. <laughs> You're a Homer Center student, huh? Yep. Yeah, and, and this is your first year in the HOT program? Yes. All right, so tell me about it. What's it been like for you? Uh, it's a lot of hard work because, like, we do get a lot of packets and, like, a lot of stuff that we can learn to help us whenever we want to do that position in the healthcare field. And and it, even though it's hard work, it's something that you're still up for? Yeah. Oh, terrific. Do you have a, an idea of where you'd like to take uh, what you learned at ICTC into the next stage of your career? Um, I thought about it a little bit, but I kind of don't really have like a specific thing I would like to do yet. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you've done in the program that uh, have been especially interesting to you? Um, the cadaver presentation was really interesting because, like, we did get to see, like, the inside of, like, an actual human body and everything. Mm -hmm. um, um, go on. Uh, you were going to say something else? Uh, we do learn a lot of, like, skills as well. And they have us kind of practice, like, the skills on each other. Like, we would do mechanical lift or toilet transfer, wheelchair transfer, just kind of the basic stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other coursework that you've done, of course, I, I'm sure there's much uh, in terms of uh, book work uh, and, and reading and, and uh, those sorts of things, written applications, uh, but that hands-on stuff is what really, really gets you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, if you're able to do that. So have you enjoyed the program? You're only in your first year. Yeah, it's I'm enjoying it so far. And you think you will stick with it and pull all, th all the way through? Yeah. Terrific. Terrific, Sonny. It's good to know that uh, you found something that is uh, really appealing to you. And we wish you the best. Thank you. I wish you the best, too. All right. So um, let us uh, visit once more with uh, Kelly Fox uh, and the various efforts going on there as we approach the holidays. Kelly, good morning again to you. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. Yeah, it's been nice to hear all these things that our health students have been involved in. It's nice seeing, you know, the collections going on in our main lobby and uh, to know that they've had these extra speakers into the program. It just makes the curriculum more meaningful to our students and especially to a first-year student like Sonia. You know, it just really sends the message home that this is real health care. 
Uh, so it's not just, I mean, they do do a lot of packets. They do do a lot of learning, especially in that first year. It's a whole new vocabulary. They have to learn all of that medical terminology. Uh, but when you have those outside speakers come in and give those kinds of demonstrations like we had with St. Louis University, uh, I think that that takes their knowledge up a few levels and allows them to say, wow, that's why we're doing all that work. <laughs> yeah. and, and we're talking health occupations here, but that hands-on aspect runs the whole way through every program at ICTC, doesn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I was thinking of that as Sonia was speaking. I thought, you know, you could be talking to any ICTC student, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade, and especially our 12th graders. I often will go around and survey our seniors before they leave us in the spring, and I'll ask them, just give me one thing. Give me one thing, student, that you really love about the ICTC or what would you miss once you graduate. Hands down, the most popular answer I get when I do that survey is that our students love, 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 love the hands-on learning. Mm -hmm. They love the projects in the lab. They love making things. They love creating things. I think that's what draws them to us. And that really is what sets us apart from any other class that they take at the sending school. I mean, obviously, they spend more time here. They're here three times the amount of time in a particular program than they are in any other class at their sending school. And when they're here, we do have the book work, but we have so much hands-on, and that's what attracts them to us. Yeah. Because then that's what they're going to go and do hopefully in the real world is use those skills, and they're going to be doing their own projects on their own job. And, of course, that's sort of an educational philosophy because of the types of fields that they are interested in entering. Uh, those will carry through. Uh, they'll get that same kind of hands-on experience at the next level, too. Oh, absolutely. This is kind of like their practice ground, right? Hmm. So it gives them the opportunity to lay a, a base of projects and ideas and oh, we've tried that, that didn't work. Oh, we did this, and it did work, so let's do it again, and then let's add this. You know, So it's kind of trial and error, and it just allows them to be more confident as they work through the projects that they will be assigned on their future job. Absolutely. All right, so good stuff happening this morning from ICTC. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to Mrs. Zach and to Sonia as well for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Todd, and I want to wish you and all the folks at Renda a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's always enjoyable spending the third Wednesday of the month with you. And right back at our friends from ICTC. Have a great day today. Okay, thanks. You too. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 116 and AM 116.